Good morning. It's Saturday, May 6th. are down and we are ready for uh, undock and relocation. Station Houston on the Big Loop performs steps two through end in 1.602 Dragonport Relocation Monitoring. Station crew copies and we are ready for Dragon undocking. Copy. Good morning, it's Saturday, May 6th. I'm NASA's Gary Jordan. What you just heard was confirmation from the crew on board the Dragon Endeavor spacecraft, as well as inside the International Space Station here on the ground in Mission Control Houston, and the teams over in Hawthorne in SpaceX. All teams are go for undocking the uh, Tr Dragon Endeavor today and uh, for a port relocation maneuver. You're looking at a live view of Dragon Endeavor uh, on the Zenith port um, as we await the departure from this docking port on the International Space Station to another. In other uh, words, what we refer to as a port relocation. Dragon will be moving from the International Docking Adapter 3, or IDA-3, on the Zenith or Space Facing Harmony port to the IDA-2 on the Forward Harmony port. This frees up the Zenith port for the arrival of the Dragon cargo vehicle on the CRS-28 mission, and prior to that, the Dragon Freedom spacecraft carrying the Axiom Mission 2 private astronauts. We expect Dragon to push away from the space station with NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, Emirati astronaut Sultan on the Audi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev on board at 6.10 a.m. Central Time. Joining me from SpaceX in Hawthorne to walk you through everything today is Jesse Anderson. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Gary. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jesse Anderson, a production engineering manager at SpaceX. This will be the third port relocation of a Dragon Crew spacecraft following those of Crew-1 and Crew-2 just a couple years back. At this point, the crew is suited. Both the Dragon and APAS hatches have been closed and vestibule leak checks are complete. There are four seats configured right now inside of Dragon and are numbered one to four from right to left when looking at the seats. Steve is in seat two or the commander seat. Woody is beside him in seat three, which for Dragon is the pilot seat. Andre is in seat four and Sultan is in seat one. The joint NASA and SpaceX teams just completed their go, no go poll for undocking and all systems are go for today's relocation. Once Dragon pushes away from station, the full maneuver will last approximately 45 minutes. While Dragon is just moving parking spots, the crew and vehicle have undergone all the same checkouts and preparations as if they were getting ready to return to Earth. Now that way, station in the unlikely event that we see an op nominal scenario, the crew and vehicle are prepared to deorbit and return home safely. Frank, we saw that the D2DM application has stopped uh, working. You can close that out and reopen the application. That call was to Frank Rubio on the International Space Station side. His job today from the space station is to monitor uh, the undocking and port relocation maneuver from inside the International Space Station, part of the checks and balances that are built in to these delicate operations. But as Jesse mentioned, we have the four crew members inside Dragon Endeavor ready for undock. Uh, she mentioned that all teams have pulled go. So we're counting down to the initiation of what's called the undock command. That's happening in about one minute, uh, 6.05 a.m. Central Time, 4.05 a.m. Pacific. At that time, uh, the undock sequence will be initiated, and it's about a five-minute sequence. Right now, with Dragon attached to the Zenith or space-facing side, it's attached by 12 latches, as well as an umbilical that connects and provides uh, data and power to in, in between the Dragon and the International Space Station. Upon undocking, it will separate uh, from the International Space Station and retreat out to about 60 meters. Uh, we should expect either a hold or a smooth transition over to this transition maneuver um, 
trajectory that you see. Uh, there is, it makes its way over to a midpoint, uh, right uh, about the halfway mark in between the two docking axes before making its way to the new docking axis also at about 60 meters. From there it approaches inwards to about 20 meters for a hold. This is the same waypoint too that we see for Dragon Rendezvous and approaches and dockings to the International Space Station. After all teams pull go from waypoint two, it'll make its way in. And again, this is a, a 45 minute maneuver. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. We will be standing down from the 1105 on dock sequence time. We'll come back with more words. Perfect starting process. And Dragon Station Houston on the big loop, we're just trying to get some monitoring tools up for Frank, and um, we don't have a rush for today's uh, activity, so we're going to catch this on the other side of our handover. So that read up to the crew, Frank Rubio, again inside the International Space Station, has a display tool called the RPOP, Rendezvous uh, Proximity on Operations Panel, uh, and a series of software that allow him to monitor Dragon's uh, undocking and port relocation maneuver, getting telemetry, and also the ability as a safety measure to send commands um, to the uh, Dragon should commands not be enabled from inside the Dragon cabin. Uh, as a safety precaution, uh, you heard the teams wave off from the initial, uh, what they call 11.05 uh, undocking time. That's referring to 6.05 a.m. Central Time. And what that means is that's the initiation of the undock command. Again, it's a five-minute sequence until we actually see the physical separation five minutes later. For a port relocation maneuver, there is a generous window uh, built into the operations. So again, they just identified that there is no rush to get separated from the International Space Station. That window that they were talking about is the data and communications coming from TDRS satellites. I have good feed on Dragon. Docking monitor. Copy. So you hear those words up to the crew, um, over to confirming from Frank Rubio again, a NASA astronaut on the International Space Station side of this operation, confirming that he's got his displays. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to wait onto the other end of what's called a handover. Uh, this is the TDRS satellites that provide video and audio communication from the space station down here to the ground so teams can monitor. Uh, that handover is expected in about seven and a half minutes. Um, and what the teams are going to do is wait until uh, that time when we regain communications and initiate a new undock sequence command at uh, 618 a.m. Central Time. Uh, again, that's the five minute period uh, to, that allows umbilicals to, to uh, disconnect as well as the 12 latches that are currently securing Dragon Endeavor to the International Space Station. That five minute sequence puts our new target around 6.23 a.m. Central Time. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for more words on docking time, on dock time. Dragon, go ahead. All right, so station monitoring program is back up and running. We are now targeting a new undock sequence time start of 1118 Zulu. And you have a go to raise visors if, this, if desired. Everyone, one eight zero, and our visors are open.
So that new undocking sequence initiation start was read up to the crew. Again, we're targeting 618 for that undock sequence command. That puts our undock and physical separation targeted for 623 a.m. Central Time. In the meantime, because we're waiting for this handover period, they are able to pull their visors up. Uh, again, as a safety measure built into the operations, visors are down during some of the most significant moments of uh, this maneuver, including the physical separation uh, from the space station for Dragon Endeavor. With the visors closed, uh, the suits themselves can provide an extra layer of protection in terms of pressure. But since we're just waiting here idly for that handover period, expected in just a little more than five minutes, where we'll lose video that we're seeing here from space, um, we expect to regain that in just a short order, probably around 20 seconds to 30 seconds. And again, we're targeting that undock sequence to, start to initiate uh, at about 618, so a little bit of margin built into the handover operations. Dragon crew, this is station. I have a little easy listening for you while we wait. Frank, I hope you enjoy a short time without us. Uh, we should be back in a couple hours, we hope. Sounds great. Some great music from the crew as they are awaiting undocking uh, and relocation of the Dragon Endeavor to a new port. We are about six minutes away, five minutes away from uh, the undocking command. And so the crew what you're seeing on your screen is the crew preparing for relocation. We've got a live view inside of Dragon Endeavor. And you can see both the pilot and commander in your view. And as you see, we're uh, starting to enter into that handover period that was mentioned, uh, which was part of the reason for the new undocking time being um, being announced at, uh, again, 623 uh, is what we're targeting for physical separation. So we lose video and audio communications uh, from the International Space Station. 
Lots of teams working in synchronization for this uh, delicate procedure today. What you're looking at is a live view of the International Space Station Flight Control Room here in Houston, Texas. The teams here are monitoring the International Space Station as a vehicle and seeing through the operations for both the vehicle systems as well as the crew. Leading the teams here in Mission Control Houston is Flight Director Pooja Jisrani. She's working uh, with her counterpart, the mission director over in SpaceX in Hawthorne, Alex Kanalekos, the mission director overseeing the operations from the Hawthorne side. All teams are talking. And a correction, Alex Kanalekos is the Capcom that you see. Uh, there in Mission Control Houston, next to Pooja Jisrani, is his voice that you're hearing on what's called the Big Loop. The Big Loop is a joint loop where the teams here in Mission Control Houston, as well as the teams over in Hawthorne, they talk with the, both the crew on inside Dragon Endeavor as well as inside the International Space Station. All teams communicating on a single loop and staying completely in sync. As we wait for the uh, handover period to come back with audio and video from the International Space Station, a little more on why we are doing a port relocation. Dragon, SpaceX, on the Dragon, visors are found. Copy that. Visors are closed and ground is go for undock at 1118 Zulu. 1118 Zulu. Dragon, Again, 6.18 a.m. Central Time, the target for the uh, undock command being sent. It's a five-minute sequence to get us to physical separation five minutes later. That's happening. Station Houston on the big loop performed steps two through end in 1.602 Dragon Port Relocation Monitoring. Station copies. And station crew is ready for Dragon undocking. And you heard that go from all teams, from Mission Control Houston, from the teams over in Hawthorne, as well as the crews inside Dragon Endeavor and International Space Station. All teams are go, counting down less than 30 seconds from that undock command being initiated. KU or video from the International Space Station not required for that initiation to occur. And that uh, triggers Dragon to um, automatically start its undocking sequence. Again, that is uh, retracting the umbilical that connects uh, the Dragon Endeavor to the International Space Station, providing data and power. Undock sequence commanded. Dragon copies. Right on time, 6.18 a.m. Central Time, the undock sequence has commanded. It's a five-minute sequence, again, until physical separation at 6.23. What's happening now is the umbilical is retracting, that umbilical originally providing data and power in between the station over to the Dragon. There are 12 latches that are currently securing Dragon to the International Space Station. They will be released six at a time. Umbilical D make complete and nominal. And that first step is complete. With the umbilical completely retracted, the first six um, latches are starting to um, retreat, retract. As Gary mentioned, the hooks will begin to retract. Um, that will allow the Dragon spacecraft to then fire its Draco thrusters in two short bursts to break the stiction between it and the docking port and then physically separate from its station. Again, that will happen at the 6.23 a.m. Central Time mark. Then Dragon will slowly back away from station and activate, activate its LIDAR which stands for Light Detection and Ranging. 
and that'll begin tracking the space station. Once it acquires a solid signal, the ground will command Dragon to hold approximately 60 meters away from station. And once everything looks good, Dragon will begin to move from in front of the station to above it. Um, so again, we are waiting for the hooks to complete unlatching, and then we can begin the physical separation from the station. And again, as we count down, video is not required for the uh, undocking to occur. That handover period that we were talking about was audio. So you're hearing the big loop and the communications from the crew on board the International Space Station as well as Dragon Endeavor. Teams are monitoring all along the way, receiving telemetry and data from Dragon. First set of hooks open and nominal. 6 hooks down and 6 to go. Again, teams in Houston on your screen on the left, as well as in Hawthorne, California on your screen on the right, monitoring these operations. We're on track for an on-time physical separation. Counting down uh, about 20 seconds or more from physical separation. Standing by. All hooks open and nominal. Dragon separation confirmed. Six dragon copies. Great right, news. We have, we have confirmed good. physical separation. Good undock burns one and two. The retreat rate is nominal. That undock time was 6:23 a.m. Central Time. At the time of undocking, Space Station and Dragon Endeavor were 258 statute miles north off the coast of Australia. Relocate burn zero complete. Undocking burns one and two uh, allow for the physical separation of Dragon from the station. From the station, relocate burn uh, will continue to increase the separation distance between Dragon, uh, Endeavor, and the International Space Station up through the docking axis to the 60 meter point, uh, the point that uh, the crew will then initiate a transition to the new axis. Again, no video from the International Space Station. We are getting data and telemetry 
showing the uh, dragon and its nominal uh, backing away from that port. Dragon, SpaceX ground has confirmed good run out performance and will be commanding hold. Dragon copies. Getting great, uh... Dragon is in command hold one. Dragon Tigers. This Dragon Endeavor passes over a ground station, still waiting for a communication from the station, but we are able to get video from Dragon itself. This is the centerline camera looking right down at its original docking port, that zenith port that you see uh, at the front end of the station uh, at the Harmony module. It backed away and commanded a hold uh, approximately 80 meters. Teams are now assessing to make sure everything is ready for that transition maneuver that gets it to the new docking axis. That hold is settling at just under 89 meters. Ground has confirmed good well now performance. You are go to command, go to relocate. All right, command and go to relocate. Dragon, execute. So we just completed a hold for redocking systems and alignment evaluation and then got a go for the maneuver to begin Dragon moving towards its new docking port. Now this process will take about 15 minutes and this will move the Dragon vehicle towards the forward port of Harmony and IDA2 or the International Docking Adapter 2. Uh, you can see on your screen, the transition maneuver is what will happen next. That move from the current docking port to its new parking port. That's right, Jesse. And that uh, retreat got us to just under 90 meters. So to get to that transition point, the crew is actually making a slow maneuver t still along the undocking axis to get back down to the original 60 meter hold point. So they're actually, it kind of looks like they're redocking a bit, but all they're doing is just getting to that um, transition hold point. And Dragon SpaceX, you have a go to raise visors per crew preference. Just SpaceX Dragon visors coming up. Again, 
most critical moments of the uh, port relocation maneuver are the undocking and redocking. The actual contact with the international docking adapters on the International Space Station. During those times, visors are down, the crew has that extra layer of protection, but during the transition maneuver, they do have the ability to open up their visors, and you'll see them close those visors once again uh, once we get the initiation uh, to go inside waypoint two and uh, redock on the new axis on the forward port. Again, what the crew is doing is coming back in to 60 meters. Uh, they had a hold, command, a commanded hold at just under 89 meters, so they're making a slow and methodical uh, movement inside, still along that same undocking axis, but they just want to meet the 60 meter point. We're now inside 71 meters. You're seeing Listen. live on your. Go ahead, Gary. Oh yeah, I was. We were. I was just listening to the flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston. They're tracking this maneuver uh, inside um, to to get to that 60 meter hold point, and are um, uh, calling out some good reads. So it looks like that maneuver is as expected to 60 meters. Everything's looking good. What you're seeing on your screen is a live view inside of Dragon Endeavor, and you can see on your left-hand side, in seat two is Commander Steve Bowen, and in the seat on the right-hand side is Woody Hoberg, who is in the pilot seat. Dragon has reached the 60 meter hold point, and you are go to command relocate transfer to begin access transition. Reminder that soft capture ring deploy will begin in the relocate to access state. Executing relocate transfer. Station Houston on the big loop. Monitor for step six in 1.602 Dragon port relocation monitoring. And with that, uh, the command, uh, the, the crew, again, as a recap, the crew did reach that 60 meter hold point coming in from 89 meters. And with uh, good uh, data being received from here in Mission Control Houston, teams gave a go. Uh, to initiate that transition maneuver. So it is slow and methodical. It's about, it's a two-step process to transition to the new axis um, by way of a midpoint. Uh, so from the original docking axis to the midpoint is approximately an 11-minute maneuver. Um, it sort of looks like the tip of a triangle, the maneuver, to get from one docking axis to the other. So it, it goes straight out to the midpoint, about the halfway point between the two axes, and then from the midpoint of the transition initiates another maneuver uh, to get down to the new docking axis. The transition is from 60 meters on the undocking axis to 60 meters on the new docking axis.
So we should be regaining some video. There it is. What you're seeing here is the feed from Dragon being fed to the International Space Station by way of a common communications panel called the C2V2 that allows a data transmission from Dragon Endeavor to the International Space Station. From the International Space Station's tracking and data relay satellite uh, network, uh, the Near Space Network, uh, we're getting that video from Dragon as we move our way outside of the ground stations that we're providing video feeds directly from Dragon. Everything's looking good uh, on this port relocation maneuver so far. Again, it's about 11 minutes uh, to get to the midpoint. Just a quick um, recap as to why we are doing the port relocation maneuver. Just a high level, what we're doing today is to move from the zenith port of the Harmony module over to the forward facing port. So you see Crew 6, Six Dragon on its original docking uh, port is being moved to that forward side uh, that you see on this new graphic. The main reason is uh, for the arrival of the uh, Dragon cargo spacecraft, CRS-28 mission, carrying a precious cargo inside the unpressurized trunk section of the uh, cargo Dragon vehicle, our new IROSAS, or Rollout International Space Station Rollout Solar Arrays. This is part of a series of power upgrades to the International Space Station that are being planned. Um, there's been several spacewalks to, to install uh, already four uh, IROSAs, uh, which are currently installed and providing power to the International Space Station. There's planned to be an additional two coming up on CRS-28. Docking to the Zenith port allows the robotic arm, and this graphic you see uh, sort of to the right of the 1A power channel, that uh, cannon arm two will position itself and move itself along the station's truss and reach out to grab the irosis from the unpressurized truck trunk. The reach of the cannon arm two is just so that they can reach the Zenith port can't quite reach the forward port. So this relocation maneuver allows uh, for Dragon uh, to position to uh, the, cr the Dragon crewed vehicle um, to easily move between the two um, ports uh, so that the Dragon cargo vehicle can arrive on the Zenith port. Uh, that launch is currently targeted for June 3rd. In between that operation, we are scheduled uh, to launch the Axiom Mission 2 private astronaut mission to the station. They will depart in late May and uh, will also dock to that zenith or space-facing port. Leaving with enough margin for the uh, cargo vehicle uh, to come and uh, bring the IROSIS to the International Space Station. Yeah, that's right, Gary. And right now, you know, we have the Crew 6 crew on board, and they are the crew that is relocating the Dragon vehicle currently. Today, we'll mark the 64th day on station for this crew, who lifted off from Kennedy Space Center on March 2nd at 1234 a.m. Eastern Time and arrived, arrived at station about 24 hours later. And so far, the crew members have dedicated hundreds of hours to scientific research in the orbiting laboratory, and last week, Bowen and Al, Al Niadi completed a spacewalk to prepare for upcoming solar array installation that uh, Gary was mentioning. Those arrays will then launch this summer, as he mentioned, uh, on the cargo space on the cargo Dragon spacecraft. And the mission is the sixth certified crew mission NASA and SpaceX have planned as part of the agency's commercial crew program.
video from the International Space Station as we're in an orbital nighttime. We're now currently over the North Pacific Ocean. You can see the navigation lights coming from Dragon, the starboard green light and the port red light. As well as the uh, internal cabin lights coming from that window on the forward uh, bulkhead section of Dragon Endeavor. A quick recap, the crew uh, undocked from the Zenith or Space Facing Port at 6.23 a.m. Uh, Central Time. Made its way along the docking axis, uh, down over to the transition point, and from the transition point at about 60 meters, um, initiated a transfer maneuver to the midpoint. Dragon has reached the docking axis midpoint. This graphic uh, does a good job of showing that maneuver. Again, it looks like the sort of the tip of a triangle. It's a two-step process to get from the original docking axis to the new axis by way of a midpoint made the uh, waypoint a little sooner than anticipated, making great time. Uh, it's a smooth transition from the midpoint. There's no hold at the midpoint. It just uh, makes a maneuver directly to the new axis. The target on the new axis is about 60 meters from the new docking port. Latest calls from here in Mission Control Houston show approximately an eight minute maneuver. So sometime around 6.50 a.m. Central Time is when we can expect arrival at the new axis. Again, in the meantime, uh, flight controllers will continue to monitor all the systems and make changes along the way. Everything going very smoothly for this uh, transition maneuver so far. Station and Dragon are approximately 263 statute miles above the North Pacific Ocean. We're expecting sunrise in just about a minute. We should be getting some, fin some better views from the uh, International Space Station and Dragon as they start to illuminate. We've been conducting this operation so far entirely in an orbital nighttime. 
So as we transition to the new axis, we'll hopefully be getting some better views in the current plan as long as we stick on the timeline. Again, this is a very flexible um, procedure. We can command holds if needed, but uh, so far the timeline gets us to dock during an orbital daytime. If you're just now joining us, Crew Dragon has undocked from the station. It first detached its two umbilicals that connect power and data, and then de uh, the 12 hooks holding Dragon in place um, retracted. The thrusters on Dragon, the Draco thrusters, uh, thrusted the vehicle away from the station. And now the vehicle Object is maneuvering. Complete. As we enter into an orbital daytime, the views of Dragon Endeavor are starting to get a bit clearer. You can see the camera from the, uh, on the, one of the external cameras on the International Space Station trained on Dragon Endeavor. It's currently a little over 57 meters from the International Space Station making its way to the new docking axis. That transition maneuver looking pretty good. You can see the Draco thrusters firing to continue orienting um, Dragon Endeavor in such a way that uh, its trajectory is, is planned to meet with the new axis. Right now, teams here in Mission Control Houston are polling to consider a smooth transition at the 60 meter point over to waypoint 2. We're expecting arrival on the new docking axis in approximately two minutes.
And as uh, Dragon Endeavor continues its approach to the new docking axis, that 60 meter point, we can expect to hold at about 60 meters before proceeding into the next waypoint, waypoint 2, which is about 20 meters. Dragon Station SpaceX on the Big Loop. Dragon has arrived at the second 60 meter hull point and is configured for docking. Confirm readiness for approach one. SpaceX Dragon, Dragon is ready for approach one. Push your copies, ready. You hear that call up to the crew aboard Dragon Endeavor. Endeavor currently holding at the 60 meter hold point. And Dragon standby for ground pull. Dragon, ground is go, and you have a go to command resume to approach waypoint two. Commanding resume to approach waypoint two. That's complete. Great news. Dragon has arrived at the docking access and also. Approach is resuming to waypoint two. Monitor per step three in one decimal 102. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station copy, step three, one decimal 102. And Dragon has already resumed or has already made it to the docking access. Uh, they did a poll, a go no go poll to approach waypoint two and got the go. So now they are currently approaching waypoint two. Dragon is going to hold one final time for teams on the ground and the astronauts aboard Dragon to do a final check before docking to the station. Now, there aren't any strict requirements to complete docking during a day or night pass, but there is always the chance that this hold could continue until lighting conditions on the docking port are ideal. Uh, now, once Dragon is ready, it will begin the final approach. This is Dragon, visors are down. Copy, visors are down. And again, that extra layer of protection through the delicate maneuver of docking to the International Space Station. Visors are down through this, through this maneuver to waypoint two. They're making great progress from 60 meters to 20 meters. They're currently at 30 meters. Station Houston, 
On step three, please let us know when your review is complete. Station on two, step three review is complete. Copy. Again, many, many players in this uh, delicate maneuver you're hearing. Station Houston at waypoint two, Dragon will briefly pause to align for docking, then automatically resume approach. Station copies. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. Ground has pulled go for approach two and will be commanding approach allowed shortly. As a reminder, once Dragon is in the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. Six Dragon copies and we see approach enabled. All right, you can hear the. Station Houston, Dragon is on final approach and is go for docking. Station crew, Mont. And station copies and on monitor via step five. Those are good words. Step five. All right, lots of action in that last minute or so. The team's uh, Dragon has a, has a, a relatively new capability to um, pause at uh, waypoint two versus a commanded hold. Uh, the transition from at waypoint two is instead of a commanded hold, it is uh, an approach prep, which is about a one minute pause. And you can see the resume uh, has already begun from waypoint two. So we are closing in inside 20 meters, uh, actually 17 meter, meters and closing at a rate of about uh, eight centimeters a second. meters. Teams are tracking a good approach. We're expecting contact in approximately three minutes. Meters. Copy, 10 meters. This dragon is slowly approaching. We did hear a call for a crew hands off point. That is where uh, the spacecraft, when it's about two meters away from the docking port, um, and that means that any aborts uh, need to be initiated by Dragon's flight computer after that point, rather than by the crew. Then the vehicle will stand by for initial contact and capture, and then will be followed by a series of events to hard dock Dragon to the new port. That's right, Jesse, and you can see that docking ring is extended. We'll report the uh, docking time at the time of physical contact and a confirmation of a soft dock inside five meters. Copy, five meters. Such a cool view here as Dragon approaches 
the new docking port. Three meters in closing. Two meters. Copy, two meters. Two meters, chop, or crew hands off point. One meter. Copy, one meter. Soft capture complete. Starting path using concurs. That docking time is 7.01 a.m. Central Time. Dragon and Station at the time of docking were 262 statute miles off the East Coast of the United States, just off the coast of South Carolina. Ring retraction in progress. Try and chop and see the The soft capture ring on Dragon, you can see, is retracting, pulling Dragon in physically to meet up with the international docking adapter. This maneuver sets Dragon up to um, position itself in such a way to start the hard capture sequence really the reverse of what we just saw for undocking from the Zenith port. We'll uh, attach uh, Dragon Endeavor by way of 12 hooks that secure uh, Dragon to the station, followed by extending an umbilical connection and allowing the transfer of power and data from the International Space Station to Dragon, as well as reverse. As Gary mentioned, we will see the reverse of what we saw during undocking. First, six hooks will begin to deploy, and then the second set of six hooks will deploy, followed by the umbilicals. And this process will take about 15 minutes or so. And after all docking events are successful, then flight com controllers will configure Dragon 4 dock operations, connecting power and data to the spacecraft. The crew will be able to get out of their suits and set them up to dry and begin operations to get the hatches back open. Now, this includes pressurizing the vestibule and a new round of leak checks. And depending on the exact timing, they have uh, the option to uh, have a meal if needed, or they can wait until they're back on board station. And we do expect it to take about two hours before the hatches are back open. Flight controller is tracking a good alignment as the soft capture ring retracts and pulls Dragon Endeavor in for the hard capture sequence. That alignment is good. That means the next step uh, will be to initiate that hard capture sequence. Again, 12 hooks and an umbilical. Ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration.
For those following along, ring retraction is complete. Teams are assessing the alignment and uh, will give the crew a status of when the hard catcher sequence starts with uh, latching uh, 12 hooks or initiating the driving of those 12 hooks to secure Dragon firmly to the station for a hard capture, followed by the extension of an umbilical. Uh, those hooks will be driven six at a time. For those tracking um, this maneuver today. Station Houston on the big loop. MCS configured, proceeding with hook driving. Station call. Part of the delicate procedure here is uh, a dance between the uh, commands sent to Dragon and the initiation of the hooks and the uh, attitude control of the International Space Station itself. Through the hard capture sequence, the International Space Station is transitioned to uh, control its attitude on the control moment gyros only, no thrusters. With the International Space Station attitude control configured, the first set of hooks are driving. Again, for those following along with today's operations, undocking and physical separation from the station's zenith port was at 6.23 a.m. Central Time, and they redocked 38 minutes later, 7.01 a.m. Central Time, to the forward port. So you can't see much from this view. Lots happening with some of the hardware on board Dragon. Those first set of hooks are complete. The second is driving. Again, there are 12 hooks that will secure Dragon to station, and hard capture complete will occur once the umbilical is mated uh, between Dragon and the International Space Station. And the view you are seeing is Crew Dragon having moved from IDA-3 or the International Docking Adapter-3 on the Zenith or Space Facing Harmony Port to IDA-2 on the forward Harmony Port. And it is currently in progress of completing the hard capture.
Hard capture complete. We did hear that call out that the hard capture has been completed. What that means is the 12 hooks are now deployed. We are just waiting for the completion of the umbilical attachment. And the umbilical provides power and data for Crew Dragon to the station. And the uh, umbilical is currently being extended. Docking sequence complete. Crew Dragon Endeavor, welcome back to the International Space Station. Sounds like Frank missed you. Thanks, Dragon. We hope so, and we hope to see him real soon. Thank you very much. Great job for the team all around, and welcome back, guys. Copy that, Dragon. Ground will be enabling hardline power and comm connection shortly. You are go to DOF suits per procedure 4.012. We will bring the cameras external shortly. Go to DOF suits. Any copies? Dragon Houston, welcome back to station. In station Houston, Frank, you got to go for your next activity in 1.403. All right, you heard that those congratulatory words all around from Steve Bowen, commander inside the Crew Dragon Endeavor from inside the International Space Station, Frank Rubio, and here in Mission Control, Houston, Houston Capcom, Alex Kenelikos. Now that uh, Crew 6 is uh, hard docked and uh, ready and docked to the International Space Station, uh, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, Woody Hoberg, Emirati astronaut Sultan Al-Niadi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev have officially redocked to the International Space Station. So we're going to wrap up our live coverage of Dragon's third port relocation maneuver. Uh, the crew now has time to get out of their suits and begin the process of opening up the hatches. That'll take about approximately two hours. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the relocation has freed up Harmony's zenith or space-facing port for the docking of SpaceX 20, SpaceX's 28th uh, commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station, and of course, we expect uh, Axiom Mission 2 to dock uh, later this month. 
the Zenith parking spot um, for SpaceX's 28th commercial resupply mission allows for the Canadarm2 to more easily access the IROSAS, or the new solar arrays, that will arrive in Dragon's unpressurized trunk. And meanwhile, Crew 6 will remain on station until this fall, targeting late August for a return to Earth inside Crew Dragon Endeavor off the coast of Florida. But before they go, NASA's SpaceX Crew 7 mission will launch and arrive to keep the station's complement at seven people. So we'll have another full house of 11 with two Dragon crews and one Soyuz docked to the space station at the same time. Well, thanks again one more time for tuning in to today's coverage of the Port Relocation Maneuver. I hope you'll join us for next week's Roscosmos Spacewalk, uh, the launch of the Axiom Mission 2 um, private astronaut mission, the launch of CRS-28 this summer, and again in the fall, as Jesse mentioned, for all of our Crew 6 and Crew 7 activities, along with all of our great coverage along the way. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston. This is a remarkable place to me because you have on one side over here, modern science. This is the new world. And that is primitive the way it was thousands of years ago. This has not been touched.